Hi everyone, it's Angela Palmer here from Stamp with Angela and I'm excited to join you today and share a new card with you. So I'm going to um, sh share some uh, stamps and things that are from the mini catalogue which will be ending soon at the end of June. So thanks for joining me today and I'm looking forward to doing some crafting with you and I hope you have fun too and I hope it inspires you with your crafting. So I'm going to come over to my desk and turn my uh, camera around. There we go. Thank you for joining me today, whether you're joining me in person or whether you are going to watch the recording. I appreciate you being here today. It's, it's wonderful to be able to um, stamp with you. So I'm trying to make this a regular thing um, of each Thursday afternoon all going well unless some unexpected things come up. Hi Gail, thanks for joining us today and to anyone else that is joining now or later. Alright, so you'll see here in front of me, I've got the Bows and Blossoms stamp set, which is very cool with the leaves and flowers and things and a couple of sentiments. And there's also a punch that um, you can get as a bundle with this. They don't cut out the leaves as such, but it's a great way to complement what you're doing with your cards and things. So you'll see here, this is... Um, the card that I'm going to recreate but in a different way in the sense of I'm going to do it um, uh, landscape rather than portrait but you'll see the background is the decorative masks so I love using the decorative masks because you can create a background in whichever color you like so if you haven't seen these yet I'll show them to you so they're in the mini catalog on page 65 and you can there's actually a set of six of them so they're known as the butterflies and flowers Butterflies and Flowers Layering Decorative Masks. There are six of them, but the three I'm going to use today aren't actually flowers or butterflies, but um, you can see um, how they can be used. We're going to use, you'll see in my cards, I've used the backgrounds. So we're going to use this kind of flower one. So I don't know if you can tell, but from my card, there is um, lots of stamping in ink. The only colored card I've used is with the leaves and with the little banner. The rest of the coloring is created with ink, which is really cool. All right, um, so I'll show you um, the masks and things. So this is a couple of them. And um, so you're going to sponge with your blending brushes like this. With this one here, you'll see it, if you're going that way, it's going to stretch it a bit. So if you were using that one, I would go with a kind of downward motion. And I'm going to show you the one I'm using today. Now I'm actually going to use my Stamparatus, but I'm not actually going to stamp with it but I'm using it to hold um, my card stock in place. So I'm basically using the magnet. So usually a Stamparatus has got this plate on it. Stamp is on there and you stamp it, but we don't need the plates today. We are going to use it for its um, magnetic purpose. So if you haven't heard of the Stamparatus, this is what it is and you can use it with your stamps or like today, we're going to use it with um, our blending brush and our decorative masks. So I've got a piece of um, cardstock. So I don't know if you can see my, these are actually note cards. So note cards are a little bit smaller than your standard card. And these were actually the cards that we did at Coffee and Cards earlier this week at Vero Cafe, which I do on the first Tuesday of the month. So I use note cards. So they come in a pack like this, 20 cards, pre-scored and with an envelope all in one, which makes life nice and easy. So I just have the card base and then I'm going to do my stamping and things on a piece on the top. And um, that way you get that nice little white frame around it as well. So thanks for joining me today. Nice to see Gail and Kylie here. Thanks for coming along. All right, so I'm going to, let's do it that way since we're going to do our card like that. So I'm going to put that down. Try not to have your magnets too close together, otherwise they're going to go and go nicely together. I don't want to break them. So put it right on the edge so that we can get to our cardstock underneath. And I'm going to use one of the new colors. It's Sweet Sorbet. Right, I'm gonna move that out of the way so we don't get ink somewhere where we don't want it. And love these blending brushes. So I'm going to get some ink. I'm actually gonna start off because I don't want too much of a solid color. And, oh, well, I do have a bit of a solid color, but there you go, just gently um, do it like this. Now I've put my camera on its stand off the table today so hopefully 
it won't shake like it might have done last week. So you could try and make the same color all the way over or you might want an ombre effect, darker and lighter, up to you. If you're careful, you can kind of have a sneak peek and see how it's looking. Nice. Okay, and just touch it up if you need to. And then when you're happy, take it off. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So you can create whatever color background you like with the ink. Now I would give that a little bit of a wipe, particularly if you're going to use, um, you know, another color ink. You don't want to dirty your ink pad or anything. So there we go. But you could use any of the backgrounds and things. All right. So next, a little bit of stamping and a little bit of punching out. So let's do our stamping first. So on a little scrap piece of cardstock, I'm going to stamp my flower. So there's two flowers that you could choose from. And there's no die for this. We're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. All right, so let's stamp that. And then we'll cut that out. And while I'm stamping, I'm going to use a sentiment. I'm going to use just for you because that's really versatile and you can use it on all sorts of things. I like the Celebrating You stamp set because it's got Happy Father's Day, Happy Birthday, Happy Easter, all thank yous, congratulations, and where is it here? Just for you. So very, very versatile. So I've got um, a little narrow piece of cardstock here that is 1.9 centimetres wide. I know that's kind of very exacting, but the reason being... It fits into the banner punch nicely. Now you get two chances. because of Oh, that's pretty good. You could turn it over if you're not happy with it. All right, so this is the builder banner punch that I'm talking about. And you can either choose the end like that or the one, whoops, the one that goes the other way. Okay, so let's do a traditional banner. So I'll just show you. So it, it fits through that bottom layer, but I still like to turn it over and just make sure it's lined up, punch it out. And then I'm also going to do on my scrap piece as well. So while we're punching, let's do a little bit more punching with our, um, I'm just going to close my ink pad so I don't get ink where I don't want it. We're going to punch out our leaves and things. So I'm using Parakeet Party, which is another in colour. And I'm also going to use, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually some vellum on there too, which makes it a little bit more interesting. So, going to punch that out. Just make sure I've gone right to the edges. There we go, and try not to lose them, because with the vellum, they um, a bit harder to see. I've got a little bit of vellum stuck in my punch, so I just need to, there we go, get that out. All right, and then this one too. Um, and I'm going to have to juggle this a little bit to make it fit. I'm not too worried about the stem, so if they're a bit shorter, that's okay. So this is quite nice, you know, you can have a sentiment or something and just put a little bit of leaves and flowers punched out around it. So it just really adds to it. Okay, fussy cutting time. So I've got my scissors and I'm going to cut out my flower, leaving a slight edge but just carefully going around it. Best thing is hold your scissors still and move your paper. All right, so keep going with that. And like I said, you could do this flower or you could use the other one. Now I like to have with my paper snips, I've got a pair of paper snips that I use for cutting paper. And I have a different pair that I use for cutting ribbon and things. Because I find if after I've been cutting lots of paper, I try and cut ribbon. It doesn't cut it very well. It doesn't sort of stay as sharp. So, as people know, particularly in coffee and card group, my one with this attached to it means I use it for cutting ribbons and things and not for paper. Very good. Okay, I think we've nearly got all our bits together. The other thing my card has is a circle. So that's around a two-inch circle, whether you've got a punch or the circle um, layering dies, you can cut out a circle to go. I just felt if I put it straight on there, it's quite busy. So I wanted to sort of have that around and then I can tuck those behind. So for the assembly part of my card, I've misplaced my, here it is, um, coloured 
strip there. Now we may need to, to trim them down a little bit. I just wanted them long enough so that when I poke them into the hair, I had something to hold. If it's too short, it's a little bit hard to push in. Okay, so what I've done is my dimensional is on, sorry, the circle is on dimensionals, so I can kind of tuck those in. And you'll see that's quite long, so I am going to shorten it a bit. That one's probably fine. So let's grab some dimensionals. And I want to make sure that I've got a bit of a gap there, so let's just kind of do top and bottom. Like so. Just remember that with the card you don't want anything over the edges because otherwise it won't fit in the envelope. Oh, I did it the other way around. The words on the top. Doesn't matter, you can choose. So once I'm sort of happy with that, I put it on with some glue. Now I have to get it rearranged again, see if I can get how I had it before. So here we go. Just I like a bit of sort of colour with it. Lovely. Now with my flower, I'm going to put that on there. Also with dimensionals, you can either glue these on first and then put the flower on top, or you can put the flower dimensionals and then tuck them in. And if you need to, you can just you know trim these off a little bit. So here's my other one that I did. So this colour here, if you're not sure, is the orchard. Orchid, I can't want to say orchard for some reason, Orchid Oasis. Um, so I'm sort of alternating. And the other little vellum one has disappeared. Oh, it's probably underneath. Yes, it is underneath. It's the only thing with vellum. It's a little bit hard to see sometimes. Okay, so kind of like that. And then, yeah, all right. So just delicately with the glue. At Cof Coffee and Cards the other day, I think I put the flower down first and then put these over the top, but it's... Either or really. And but I like the way you could just punch out some of these shapes and add them to a card. You could um, you know, have a sentiment and then a couple of leaves and things, particularly for masculine cards and stuff, and it could look quite nice. Alright, now we're going to put my flower on making sure I cover up all those little messy ends. Okay, there we go. So nearly done. So can you see what else I need to put on? I need my little butterfly, and then I need to put it on my card. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is... Oh, look at that. Yes, you can. See the, the shimmer there? That's Wink of Stella. So I'll put that on once it's on my card front. So like I said, these are pre-scored. So just make sure as you fold it that it lines up nicely and then crease it and glue it on. So when you don't have some designer series paper or something in the colour that you need, you can create your own backgrounds with these decorative masks. So that's really cool. Okay, and butterflies. Once again, these were really popular. I think I'll just go for a little one, put it up here, and Wink of Stella. If I haven't used my Wink of Stella, it might do a bit of a blob, so I'm going to get out a scrap piece of paper and just squeeze it gently. You can kind of see it coming down, and then often it's a bit of a blob at first. And I don't want my blob on my card, so I'm just, here it comes, see that's that blob? Didn't want that. So now we can... Just colour our petals and it adds that nice little sparkle. So, and you don't have all the mess of glitter. So it's really cool. Good to have one of these handy. When you store it, don't store it down because all the liquid will go to the bottom. Have it like this, upright. And then when you need to use it, do what I did. Just squeeze it gently, get it going on a scrap piece of paper, then put it on your project. All right, there we go. I think we're done. I think that's the card. So fairly simple. I'll show you um, what else I did. So that was in the Tahitian Tide. So that's the blue version. But because of the design, I felt it need to go that way. And then I've got another red one in the Sweet Sorbet. And that used that other die. You, you know, you might decide it wants to go that way or you can have it sideways. Um, so that was the other design. 
So earlier on, I also mentioned with those um, layering masks that there are butterflies and flowers. So if you missed the beginning, here's the butterflies and flowers. So here is a card that has got those butterflies and flowers made with the decorative masks. So layering it once with either a lighter colour and then a darker colour or just light touch and then going over more heavily for that um, two-tone sort of look. So um, that's lots of fun to make. Here's one we did at Extravaganza. Um, that is just one colour, just lighter and darker. And then inside, here's the pattern we just used today, just a bit of decoration. And the flower is here as well. And this is like a little gift bag that you can put a gift card or something in. So lots of versatility with the decorative masks. Just remember that they are retiring at the end of June or while stocks last. So if you really like them, um, you may like to get them sooner than later. They're $21, so they're quite reasonable. And there are other things you can do, not just with inks and things, um, but other things you can do too with embossing paste and stuff. I've got some uh, videos on my YouTube channel, so you can check those out and see what else you can do with them too. Lastly, I'll show you the other card we made at Coffee and Cards because it uses the same stamp set. Usually I do projects with two completely different things, but I wanted to show the versatility of this set and just for stamping. So this is what we made. So you'll see that I have used the leaves and flowers from the set in different colours. Um, evening, evergreen, soft suede and soft succulent for the background and a bit of um, twine and then the sentiment and then so you can make it you know slightly more masculine if you want to if you do want to pop a color and you want to add the flowers to you can so there you'll see the same flower that I used on this card is um, in there as well and a few little butterflies too so you can kind of keep it simple or you can add a bit more color to it so there you go so thank you for joining me for today's Facebook live I hope that gives you some new ideas um, with your stamping and things and you can even use like if you punch out a shape this isn't a good example well it, you could even um, you know sponge using the offcuts that you create from your punches and things as well so um, lots of ways to use uh, decorative masks or even the offcuts from your punches and dies if you've got any questions, please feel free to comment and I'll look through the comments after as well. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. It's lovely to see you. I, like I said before, I hope to make this a regular Thursday afternoon Facebook Live. And if you are interested in any of the products, feel free to contact me, particularly if you don't have a demonstrator. I can send you a catalogue and things. So thanks for watching today and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.